Good evening. I'm Sarah Whiting. I'm the Dean of the Graduate School of Design, and I'm delighted to welcome you all here. How unbelievably fortuitous that we start this new school year with an exhibition and a conversation, since both are ideal formats for advancing ideas. It's terrific to immerse yourselves in the Shinohara exhibition outside. Seeing all this work gathered in one place enables you to assess an office's practice, especially the late phase of an architect's career. Looking closely at original drawings and models enables you to consider their role, their success as representations. And reading Shinohara's thoughts takes you out of 48 Quincy Street in 2019 and puts you in the mind of a Japanese architect in the 1980s. One of the parts I really loved of the text outside is his description of being in Vienna in the late 80s, a place he saw as a quaint and stunningly beautiful village in comparison to the crazy chaos of his native Tokyo, a city that I only discovered this morning in reading the wall text that he characterized as being of the near future. The advantage of having this exhibition up in the Drucker Design Gallery until October 11th is that you can dip in and out of it, and please do just that. You can fuel your entire day with a single term, progressive anarchy. Like, think about that for a while. Read his description so you understand what he's talking about. But what an amazing term, progressive anarchy. Maybe I shouldn't encourage you too much. Uh, you, you can fuel your entire day with a single term, a paragraph, a drawing, a model, or a photograph. Modern Next, the title that the curators have given the show, was a concept that paralleled and therefore challenged the postmodern ethos that was dominant worldwide in the late 80s. How timely for us to be taking Shinohara's uh, concept of it here today, taking it in and, and addressing it here today. And starting our events with a conversation, it's the perfect model of what we all do in a school. An architect and a historian talking about the impact of another architect, I'm thrilled. I want to thank Kazuo Sejima for coming all this way to, for the occasion of this exhibition opening. It's wonderful to have you here. I want to thank the three curators of the show, Sen Kwan, Angela Pan, and Shiozaki Taishin. I want to thank and the large and very talented GSD team behind this exhibition. And finally, I'd like to thank and introduce Mark Lee, Chair of the Department of Architecture and Professor in the Practice, who will do the real introduction this evening. Thanks. Uh, I'm Mark Lee. I work for Sarah Whiting. Um, I have a few events I have to announce. These upcoming events at the GST. Next Tuesday, September 10th, there will be a lecture uh, by Samuel Bravo. He is the Wheelwright Prize lecturer. There will be a Piper at 6.30. And then on Thursday, September 12th, there will be a lecture by Dave Hickey, who will give the Rouse Visiting Artist Lecture at Piper at 6.30. And then on September 13th, Friday, Philip Ushbrung from the RTH will give a lecture at noon in Stubbins. Um, Shinohara Kazuo Modern X, I think, is a very important exhibition at a moment when Shinohara's influence appears greater and more relevant than ever. I think in the course of history, there were many architects who have been influential to the extent where schools of thought were cultivated, from Palladio to Neo Palladians or Mies van der Rohe and his followers. But when the entire body of an architect's work is less than hom homogenous and takes on a more multifaceted disposition, the influence of the work also becomes more diverse. Take, for example, I think of the work of uh, Louis Kahn. One could say that the richest medical building or the Olivetti factory spawned uh, the work of Hermann Hertzberger or the Dutch structuralist. Or when one thinks about Salk Institute or Kimball Art Museum, the entire career of Tadao Ando could come from there. The, his Indiana Theater, the dining hall at Exeter, one could say spawned Venturi, Roch, and Scott Brown. Or his buildings at Dhaka spawned the work of Mario Bota. And like Khan, Shinohara had a diverse body of work over his more than 50-year-long career, which he taxonomized into a chronological series of styles, the first, second, third, and fourth, which Sang would tell you more about. 
He was an iconoclast. He had, a consist he had consistently and deliberately situated himself outside of and against the mainstream vanguard, whether it be metabolism, postmodernism, or movement, any movement of the moment, and seeking to reconcile Japanese traditions and sensibilities with that of a international modernism. He became the founder of the so-called Shinohara School as one of Japan's most influential architects of the post-war generation. Uh, many architects, including our guest tonight, Kazuo Sejima, or Toyo Ito, Isuko Hasegawa, Ryo Nishisawa, Atelier Bawao, or Go Hasegawa, who returned as a visiting critic to GSD this term, are among a few whose work and thinking has been associated with the genealogy of the Shinohara school. And beyond Japan, Shinohara's influence has extended from architects such as Rem Kuhas, who commissioned him to do the uh, ULL Tower, uh, to, or, or to Swiss architects of a generation such as Christian Keritz, Valerio Ochati, to the following generation of Pascal Flemmer and Raphael Zuber. While the influence of Shinohara's first three styles seems to be more obvious in the way that the influence of his first style is evident in a series of vernacular architecture where tradition formed the basis of innovation, or the way the use of concrete, the embracing of an almost artistic, if not autonomous abstraction, and the negotiation of topography in the second and third styles influenced the work of the Swiss architects from Graubünden, I would say the influence of the fourth style, Shinohara's last and one which he had referred to as modern next, has yet to be has yet been properly appraised. One could say this fourth style is a period we had, where he had moved from the division to addition as the modus operandi of design and spatial construct. It was a period where his work was arguably less consistent than his first three phases and more controversial. In the fourth style, not only did he venture into a series of institutional scale projects, a departure from the residential scale that comprised the majority of his career, but he also situated the work as a reflection on the chaos and randomness and the, of the changing urban conditions of Tokyo. I'm particularly thrilled that the Shinohara Kazuo Modern Next exhibition in the Drucker Design Gallery chose to focus on this fourth style of Shinohara's work, for which I believe the final chapter of its influence has yet to be written. Our guest tonight, Kazuo Sejima, opened her own studio in Tokyo in 1987, and then in 1995, together with Ryo Nishisawa, founded SANA. She won many awards, which included the Pritzker Prize, Japan Architecture Award, the Venice Biennale Golden Lion Award. She's currently a professor at the Polytech University of Milan, the Yokohama Graduate School of Architecture and Teaching, also at Japan Women's University and the Angavante uh, at, in Vienna. In 2010, she was appointed the director of the 12th International Architectural Exhibition of the Venice Biennale, in which Shinohara was posthumously presented with the Golden Lion in Memoriam Award. She will be in conversation with Seng Kwan. Seng is an architectural historian specializing in modern Japan and is a faculty here at GSD and the University of Tokyo. He has written extensively on Japan's post-war architectural culture, including a, a trilogy on the metabolis. He was co-editor of Kenzo Tange, Architecture of the World, the first volume in a series of modern Japanese architecture, and is currently completing books on Kenzo Tange, Maki, and Kazuo Shinohara. Exhibition plays a major role in Seng's research methodology. His curatorial work include Utopia Across Scales, highlights from the Kenzo Tange archive at the GSD here, Metabolism, City of the Future, presented at the Mori Art Museum, and then on the thresholds of space making, Kazuo Shinohara, which was shown in St. Louis and at the Ateha Zurich. Please join me to welcome Sen Kwan and Kazuo Sejima. Um, thank you very much, Mark. Um, we all want to hear uh, more and as soon as quickly, uh, as soon as possible from Sejima san, I'm sure. So I'll try to make my remarks brief. Uh, nonetheless, we have a series of acknowledgements uh, to get through and also what I thought uh, would be useful to make the conversation uh, as effective as possible uh, is to give a brief, a brief overview both of the exhibition uh, as well as um, the kind of um, the, the uh, se sequence of the four styles that defined um, Shinohara Kazuo's um, career. So before we engage Sejima-san in the conversation on Shinohara's influence on her and her generation of Japanese architects who came of age in the 1980s, I want to briefly introduce the, architect the architecture of Shinohara Kazuo and to acknowledge some of the people who have made the exhibition possible. 
I'd like to recognize for, first and foremost my collaborators, Angela Pang, with whom I've shared this journey in Shinohala for seven years now, and whose design of the exhibition has so effectively served as an interlocutor between the objects on display and the Drucker Gallery space. I'm also indebted to Professors Shiozaki Taishin, who is also our co-curator, Professor Okuyama Shinichi, uh, and David Stewart at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Um, all, uh, all of them, Professor Shiozaki, um, Okuyama, uh, and David Stewart, have supported and indeed tolerated the latitude with which we have interpreted and presented this material. This collection of original material on display under the custody of Tokyo Institute of Technology, where Shinohara taught and practiced from virtually his, um, throughout his um, professional career, has never been displayed with, with this level of comprehensiveness. I also want to convey, convey my profound gratitude to the people here at the GSD who have made this exhibition possible, to students in my course on uh, my course Computing Visions of Modernity in Japan, to Dan Borelli and his entire exhibition team, and to Ken Stewart and Office of Communications and Public Programs. Two successive chairs of the Department of Architecture, first Michael Hayes and especially Mark Lee, have celebrated Shinohala as a figure from the recent past with extraordinary contemporary relevance. Mohsen Mustafavi championed the long tradition of building relationships between the GSD and Japan during, this, during his deanship and initiated with what has now become a trilogy uh, on Japan's modern masters, starting with Tange Kenzo, which took place exactly 10 years ago now in September of 2009, followed by, uh, by a second exhibition on Kikotake Kiyonori in 2012, each accompanied by, by a publication from Lars Müller. For much of his career, Shinohala Kazuo built beautiful single-family houses that have reconfigured and enriched our understanding of domesticity, tradition, form, language, scale, nature, and the city. The emphasis of this exhibition on Shinohala Kazuo highlights, in fact, his nuanced attitude towards the city, which emerged with great, great um, greater which emerged with greater saliency in the late 1970s and reached its apotheosis in the following decade through a series of institutional scale projects. While Shinohara organized his long career into a chronological series of styles, first, second, third, and fourth, where he pursued different formal, representational, and technological expressions, there are also important motifs he never wavered from with the relationship between the house and the surrounding urbanity being the most important and persistent. In 1988, he coined the term modern next to underscore the avant-garde forward-looking attitude of his architecture. As a, counterpo as a counterpoint to postmodernism, modern next was also a commentary on Japan's bubble economy, as the scale and intensity of urban activity reached unprecedented heights. This position was partly informed by his travels abroad to Africa, to the Americas, and to Europe, and by his reading of European cultural criticism. Shinohara labeled this last period the fourth style. In the, in the same way tradition formed but the basis of innovation for the first style, chaos and randomness are to instigate a new vitality for architecture and the city. I hope you all take pause to look through the Modern Next essay that we have printed on the uh, in its entirety in the gallery. This essay uh, has been now been translated into English for the first time. One of the terms you'll come across is kyodai na shuraku, enormous village that Shinohara used to describe Tokyo. When I first read this, I was immediately reminded of a similar term, oki na inaka, when I've, um, made by Tange Kenzo 30 years earlier, in the 1950s. While the two wordings can, can be taken to mean the same thing, I prefer to translate Tange's version 
Okina Inaka into a big, sprawling rural village. The connotation here for Tange was, of course, entirely negative and dismissive. Inaka, the countryside, is the opposite of urban, which for Tange was axiomatically linked to modernity. In fact, it is somewhat startling to see Tange use such a pedestrian tone in this writing. Conversely, for Shinohala, Kyodai na Shulaku, uses a vocabulary that is decidedly more academic, more matter of fact, the recognition of a reality. Even though Shulaku is typically taken to mean small villages or townships, there is no clear reason why it cannot be used to describe a metropolis of 30 million people. The term is also sufficiently ambiguous. It brings us to Shinohala's extensive travels abroad, which he started to do in the 1970s after recovering from a major illness. Um, and we have, in fact, on view outside um, in the corridor by the entrance next to um, Cambridge Street, uh, some of the a selection of the photographs that Shinohala took from um, his journeys. These amateur, rapidly taken photographs reveal sources of, ins of his inspiration for concepts such as crevice, human shadows, and chaos that characterize his later design thought. This is all to say that Shinohala had an entirely different outlook on the condition of these messy urban conditions. In Modern Next, what he sought was a new architectural language that responded to the set of conditions and transcended it, rather than to race through these cities with straight avenues and gargantuan megastructures. So I'll just briefly uh, show you the context in which Shinohala was, in fact, um, operating and responding to. Um, so this would be um, two attempts by Tange Kenzo in the late 1950s trying to bring order and regularity and rationality to, um, to Tokyo. And the plan on the, on the right, of course, uh, is uh, Tange's famous intervention, uh, not only of the bay itself, but the entire restructuring of um, the metropolitan area, which then by then had exceeded 10 million in population. The, I should also mention that the metabolis, uh, in fact, was so closely aligned uh, with um, high government uh, and the construction industry, and they had this at their disposal a Cessna airplane with which they were able to survey and fly over uh, Japan's um, both urban and rural areas. And this is really how they had this very much a, a, a bird's eye view, a top-down, uh, literally top-down perspective on urbanity, um, whereas um, certainly Shinohala, operating from a, in a very different context, um, did not have access to this kind of um, perspective. So the pairing between Tange Kenzo and Shinohara Kazuo is a crucial way to frame this important chapter of international modernism as it evolved in Japan. Shinohara was born in 1925, placing him in the same age range as the metabolis, younger than um, Otaka Masato, for instance, who was two years older, uh, and um, uh, older than um, Maki and Izozaki, uh, who, are, who were, I think, respectively three years and five years his um, uh, junior. Just as the metabolists were ascending in influence and notoriety, notoriety, Shinohara famously declared a house is a work of art as a frontal attack on his elite peers from the University of Tokyo, uh, who were happily scheming together with their friends in government and industry, uh, trying to rationalize uh, architecture and cities. And indeed, Tange Tange's presence loomed large in the background and, and drove um, the discursive framework that young, young architects like Shinohara must respond to. And in fact, the project on the um, left, uh, the house in Kugayama, was the debut, was the very first published work, built work by Shinohara, which obviously paid homage to the house in Seijo, um, this um, designed by Tange a year earlier for his own family.
While Tange's house for his family was very much a one-off project out of his vast orb of buildings on a far more heroic scale, Shinohara operated in the separate parallel realm of single-family houses for the first 25 years of his career. Trained initially as a mathematician and taught briefly as a math teacher before going to architecture school, Shinohara studied at the laboratory of Seike Kiyoshi at the Tokyo Institute of Technology in the early 50s. Shinohara's teacher, um, Oh, I should say this first. It is somewhat ironic then that the small single family house in Tokyo's rapidly expanding suburbs would become the topic of such a rarefied um, study uh, worthy of um, um, academic investigation. This is something that specifically took place at um, Tokyo Institute uh, at Tokyo Institute of Technology in the laboratory of Seike Kiyoshi, as well explained soon. And this is in parallel to other contemporary works. Uh, by, so, um, by perhaps the architects more aligned with the metabolists, uh, people such as Ikebi Kiyoshi and Amasawa Makoto, who were still working, operating in this trans-war, uh, CM-inspired um, paradigm of the um, minimum dwelling, of the existence minimum. So briefly, I'll just run through a few slides um, that I think, in a sense, best characterize, best describe each of the four successive uh, styles of Shinohara. So the first style, roughly going from um, the early 50s, from 1954, the house in Kugayama, uh, running through the mid-1960s, ending with the house in white. And both um, house in white and this house, uh, the umbrella house, are both uh, on view in the exhibition uh, space. Um, suggests some of the um, ways in which uh, Shinohara operated. And um, it takes on, by that time, what had already become uh, a specific planner type in the small single family house, that being a perfect square. Uh, uh, some of you may already know, for instance, Kikotake Kiyonori's uh, Sky House has a floor plan that is exactly um, a 10 by 10. Um, in, um, in dimensions, uh, and a series of other architects in the early 50s had also operated, uh, experimented with the um, perfectly square plan. Um, but in this case, the, Kalaka, uh, the umbrella house by um, Shinohara, he takes, on, he, um, he takes on a radically different um, uh, in approach to how the spaces are divided. In fact, you'll see that a very um, uh, quite curiously, the hard pillar, the, cent uh, the central column in this plan is actually off center, and this achieves uh, several um, effects. One of which, of course, is to have a, 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 a sense of hierarchy in terms of the rotation of the four major uh, volumes in this plan. But, per but perhaps even more importantly, is the by offsetting the central hard pillar here in the umbrella house, Shinohara is able to achieve a direct, um, is, to able, is able to reveal the copula, the crown, in the, um, in the umbrella house. Uh, whereas if the heart pillar had just gone all the way up through the center, as it had been a conventional umbrella, that uh, centrality would not have been um, visible. Shinohara was also, um, as you can see here, um, very much concerned with this idea of a revival of Japan's uh, folk domestic architecture tradition, the idea of the minka, and uh, spe specifically the, uh, the idea of an earthen floor of the doma, uh, this ambiguous space that is uh, really the center of uh, domestic life for um, uh, in uh, pre-modern Jap Japanese domestic uh, arrangements. As he moved in the second half of the 1960s to the so-called second style, he dispensed with a lot of uh, what he referred to as the symbolic aspects of representation, um, the issue of tradition and how to use tradition as a force, uh, as, uh, as a force of innovation um, 
in, in, um, in post-war Japan and resorted to a series of much more, let's say, introverted um, experimentations, a series of highly dramatic, orchestrated um, volumes uh, through the course of an interior sequence. And the third style, and perhaps this is um, also the period that has gotten the most attention uh, critically, um, um, both in terms of Switzerland, as Mark was alluding to, but also more recently amongst uh, architects in Japan and elsewhere. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in the, in the early 1970s, um, Shinohara started to travel abroad quite extensively and also was um, reading up on um, European critical theory uh, with a, a great deal of enthusi enthusiasm. But this is also one of the um, interventions we're making, a sense of um, uh, this, in terms of cur uh, curating the exhibition, an attempt to um, to add a twist to this very didactic chronological sequencing of first, second, and third, and fourth styles, but perhaps to position these two most famous of projects from the third style, the Tanikawa House from 1974 and Housing Warehala from 1976, as in, in terms of um, a watershed moment um, that is really characterizing the earlier, much more domestic um, attitude towards, um, towards living um, that perhaps summarizes the first 20 years from Kugayama all the way down to, uh, to Tanikawa in 1974, and really the house in Uahara um, initiating a new chapter in this work where he takes on the urban conditions of building in Tokyo, such as this one. Uh, this photograph, I think, shows uh, very, very clearly what this entailed, the, the, the very harsh um, building conditions of these small uh, single-family houses in this vast, sprawling uh, urban mess that Tokyo had already become in the 1970s, and how to rise above and overcome it. And it's really in the housing warehala that we can anticipate, I think, a lot of the institutional scale projects that we started to see um, um, in the 1980s. Um, the house in Uehara, uh, even for Shinohara, he was actually quite fond of describing this image uh, of the savage, of the rawness of this um, jungle. Um, people have said that perhaps he was reading a bit too much uh, Levi Strauss at the time. Uh, but in any case, uh, he was very much drawn to, uh, drawn to the, the harsh realities of building in the city and to let uh, the architecture speak for the kind of conditions such as um, exposure to sunlight um, and um, the, the, the rawness of clashing, uh, of having um, these diagonal columns um, be um, inserted very, very prominently into the central living spaces. Um, before I wrap up uh, this presentation of um, this brief, brief, brief overview of Shinohara, I just wanted to um, um, suggest this idea of um, a Shinohara school, as, as Mark had mentioned earlier, which is very much um, an, um, uh, a substantiated idea, as I will introduce briefly. Uh, but in fact, we can also suggest of these uh, various genealogies, which are extremely prominent and imp important when we situate um, the, the kind of person, not, not only the personalities, but also uh, the methodologies and ideas with which these, oper uh, these architects operated with. So as I mentioned, Shinohara Kazuo was a member of um, the laboratory of Seike Kiyoshi at Tokyo Institute of Technology. Um, Seike Kiyoshi, in addition to his teaching position at Tokyo Tech, he was in fact at uh, in the early 50s, also an editor of the highly influential journal um, Shin Kenshiku. And it was really from this position as editor of Shin Kenshiku that Seiki Kiyoshi was able to establish the small single family house as a legitimate um, and rightful subject of academic inquiry, which um, whereas the colleagues from Tokyo, uh, from the University of Tokyo, probably would have paid less attention to. 
Um, but Seike and Seike school was really uh, highly effective in cultivating a specific um, genre of uh, residential designs. And um, Shinohara Kazuo, um, which you can see um, uh, uh, his picture all the way to the left-hand side of that group photograph looking downwards, um, was really able to um, champion this um, highly, uh, you might want to call, um, uh, ironic attitude of this high, perhaps very, very uh, pedantic middle class um, building type. At the same time, he was highly successful in cultivating a, a group, a very rarefied group of clients, all of whom were novelists, artists, um, uh, photographers, uh, painters, who not only embraced, tolerated his work, uh, method of working, but very much perhaps found resonance in Shinohala's uh, method of designing. And I also encourage all of you to um, look at the video, the interview, uh, filmed video that we have with the client, the son and the widow uh, of the client of um, the um, uh, housing warehala who was very, very fond of describing um, how what it was like to grow up as a young boy in this living space with all these diagonal columns that um, divide the space uh, in various ways and how to um, essentially make it, uh, claim it in, uh, as his own. And lastly, I just want to put the slide uh, onto the screen as we invite uh, Sejima-san to the screen. So in 1979, um, the Japanese um, architectural journal SD Review uh, published a monographic issue on uh, Shinohara Kazuo. And toward the back of the volume, there was a small uh, section uh, delineating this, proposing this idea of a Shinohara school. And it listed specifically three of the younger, um, uh, of the next generation people who were still in their early 30s, um, mid 30s, um, who had been doing, uh, who were in fact by that time doing a lot of in, in, uh, interesting independent work, but clearly um, uh, influenced uh, in, uh, by the leg legacy of Shinohara. And the three original members of the so-called Shinohara school were Sakamoto Kazunari, who succeeded um, uh, Shinohara's chair as professor of architecture at uh, Tokyo Tech, uh, Hasegawa Itsuko, uh, and uh, Ito Toyo. Uh, I should also mention that Hasegawa Itsuko and to Ito Toyo were both initially uh, students and associates in the office of uh, Kikotake Kiyonori and independently in the early 70s uh, veered towards um, um, Shinohara. And Hasegawa Itsuko was also for a long period of time um, the, the perhaps the main um, assistant deputy uh, to the practice of Shinohara Kazuo uh, as it was being based out of um, Tokyo Tech. Um, and in this conversation, I think we'll be speaking quite a bit about this particular context of the generation of Shinohara School Sakamoto uh, Hasegawa in Ito in terms of the, um, in, uh, his, her own professional and intellectual development uh, in the 1970s and 80s. So with that, I'll invite Seijima-san to the podium. Thank you very much for joining us for this opening of the um, exhibition. Um, so you are um, certainly a, a tremendous fan of um, Shinohara Kazuo. And um, as, as Mark uh, had mentioned earlier, in 2010, when you were the chief curator of the Venice Biennale, um, you uh, um, nominated Shinohara Kazuo for a special um, golden Lion in the memor in memoriam. So, um, so it's, it's um, uh, wonderful that we are able to have you for this conversation this evening. Um, so, for my part of the discussion session, um, I wanted to essentially to divide our session into three parts, essentially covering three periods: 1970s, 1980s, and the early part of the 1990s. 
um, perhaps not so much to talk about what your thoughts are on each of the projects um, of uh, Shino Halakazu, but to really situate what it was like for you as a young architecture student, as uh, a young architect who was, um, who was emerging on the scene in the 1980s, and thirdly, as an architect who was uh, gaining notoriety and prominence in the late 80s when you established your own practice uh, and starting to um, get, uh, receive recognition uh, internationally. So three very different stages and how um, your own journey as an architect uh, perhaps is situated um, in this context, uh, perhaps in the shadow of Shinohala. <laughs> So perhaps we can start with the first uh, period in the 1970s. Uh, 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 you as a student um, in, uh, at Japan Women's University, uh, and, and this of course is exactly the same period when Shinohara was going through this transformation as an architect in the third style. So uh, if, you can, if I can ask you to talk a little bit about your, your experience at Japan Women's University. Yes. <laughs> mm, first of all, thank you very much for inviting. I just felt very nervous. But also, I'm very happy to be able to see the, his exhibition here. Uh, I think it's really there. I think so. So then it's uh, also for me that it's very uh, not all so much familiar, but especially the fourth period. But only I could see before is in photo. So that's a real model and the sketches is really interesting. And also I hope Shinohara son is now very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also to sit today here. Sorry, I couldn't uh, have a time to study, but I checked the, the time wise. And then I, because I just really uh, admired and also for me, it's Shinohara is always far away. <laughs> but uh, I realized, yeah, because the, when I joined Ito's uh, studio, this is 81. That means that this exhibition focused from 81. And then also the, when I started my own practice, this is Tokodai Sentinel's Hall. It's completed. So the very strong, I didn't realize before, <laughs> I don't, but a very strong relation. And of course, so that means that before, the Tanigawa-san's house or the Uehara-san, Uehara-dori house is uh, also even more the Karakasa or the White House is very impressive for me, but just uh, uh, when I was a uh, Japan Women's University student. And that time, I think in Japan, Shinohara is really special because, of, especially my career, I started not only act, not the architecture department, more house, house domestic, home economics. So that means the island in the school, uh, the circulation should be short. The kitchen, uh, dining room should be next to. Uh, kitchen, <laughs> or well, these are uh, island. Also, the, especially the, my period is not so far from after Second War. Of course, some period, but still, Japanese lifestyle is really uh, more primitive. So, and then the modern style is gradually coming, but still, so more we learn the lifestyle, and then. So that in school or the normal focus the magazine issue is more typical function, <laughs> typical, and then also the what is a comfortable space for the living. The beside he published house is art <laughs> and completely different. So very shocked. And uh, when I met him, met me, I knew him is. When I joined the university, 75, and just I saw the, some books in library. And then the, by Taki, he took a lot of white 
black and white photos, very abstract photos, and then it for me it's really shocked, and then so different from uh, I knew, and then after also I learned in my university, and also typical uh, Japanese. Uh, uh, magazine or the is very different from what uh, Shinohara uh, tried to do. So, so that time I really admire and very kind of he is uh, not either, but <laughs> really, uh, but I really love the try to find his photos, but. He is only, yeah, and also the, until yesterday, I believed he made a very small uh, number of projects, but actually he did a lot. <laughs> and then, but uh, he tried to show himself also very independent from others, I think. And uh, uh, so that is uh, my, so, and also the old drawings always white and just black line and very difficult to understand. But with uh, Taki's photo and this uh, drawing is very much, and then to show some uh, very strong expression to us this. Um, thank you very much. So I just want to perhaps um, give a bit more context uh, and response to this idea, the import, underscore the importance of Shinohala's, um, the, 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 what he, they called um, his aphorism, uh, the slogan that a house is a work, a house is a work of art. And um, perhaps, um, so there's this tremendous rivalry, I should, I should, um, uh, preface this by saying between University of Tokyo and Tokyo Tech, and the Tokyo Tech people feeling that they are really the underdogs. Um, and Shinohara's slogan, a house, is a, work, a house is a work of art, is a direct refutation of a slogan that came out of University of Tokyo in 1915. Um, uh, a student from the University of Tokyo, his thesis project, diploma project, was titled Architecture is not art. And that really drove the whole direction um, that turned Tokyo University's architecture department uh, in the 19 teens very much toward in, in the direction of engineering, uh, to the extent that drawing is really, I, I perhaps, as, as Mark mentioned, I also teach at University of Tokyo, so I should not um, reveal too much, but drawing is really not um, a, a very important part of the uh, curriculum until fairly recently. Um, so Shinohara was very effective in, um, I think, appropriating um, this methodological and also ideological distinction between him and the metabolis uh, to his advantage and also very much, uh, again, cultivating this very special group of clients, uh, painters such as Asako Lasets and Nomiyama Gyoji, uh, novelists, poets like Tanikawa Shintaro, um, uh, the photographer uh, Otsuji Kiyoshi, all of whom, by the way, not only had, had two houses commissioned to Shinohara, not just one, they, they first had either a city house and then came back a few years later to ask him to do a country house or vice versa. So he definitely had a very devoted uh, following, a fan base. And I think it's really, uh, it, this is one of the things we're trying to achieve in the book project, but really underscore the sympathy uh, with which Shinohala was able to operate uh, with, uh, with artists, people in the, in the creative uh, circles, which is really not something that Tange or the metabolists have paid too much attention to. Yes, also the until fourth period, he never did the big project also. So only focused a small project, private house, and the client is really a special person. Um, yeah, just maybe to, to, to underscore some of these comments, um, this idea of genealogies uh, is really has become a key word in the study of um, modern Japanese architecture. Uh, the, the exhibition, the trio, the trilogy of exhibitions uh, curated by um, 
um, uh, Yoshiharu Tsukamoto um, of Atelier Bauwau. He's also a professor at Tokyo Tech. Uh, and I should also mention that he is really um, very much positioned in this genealogy of the Shinohara line. Um, it's, it goes from, from Seike to Shinohara to Sakamoto and then to Tsukamoto. And uh, there's, in fact, a, a very prominent group of young architects uh, in the next generation of people of Go Hasegawa's generation uh, who, in fact, came out of the laboratory of uh, Tsukamoto at Tokyo Tech. So there is that very much uh, a, a clear uh, lineage in this uh, trajectory as well. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, Tsukamoto -san, uh, Yoshi Tsukamoto did uh, at the Japanese house exhibition is very much delineating um, to bring clarity to these continuities that run through uh, the so-called Shinohara school or Seike school. Um, this was also an, a, a, an idea that became very prominent in the MoMA exhibition. Um, 2015, 2000, 2016. In, in the spring of 2016, MoMA had the exhibition Constellations uh -huh, yeah. uh, 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 with um, Sana and um, Ito in the two main galleries parallel to each other and the pending of it in three other galleries were um, uh, devoted to Ishigami, uh, Fujimoto, and um, uh, Hilata. Uh, also, Nishizawa-san also had his own yeah. yes, uh, yes. cluster. Uh, and uh, um, um, those of you who, who visited the exhibition might remember there is, in fact, a very small sketch um, a drawing um, that is placed at the entrance to the exhibition gallery where um, uh, 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 Toyo Ito was a, uh, drew out, sketched out the kind of connections, uh, not in the line as in, in the family tree, but in fact a series of um, stars, planets, satellites, perhaps uh, a series of constellations in which he positioned him, himself in this uh, coterie of uh, architects and engineers. Yeah, and uh, so I think the Until the, this is my, <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not or the correct, but uh, until fourth this exhibition period, the Ito or Sakamoto uh, and uh, uh, Hasegawa were more uh, uh, some, I think, the group, but from the 80s, the Shinohara started, even he said, uh, house is art, but still he has more, uh, li uh, have a li uh, commit, uh, connected to the Japanese history or the, or the, the his, not his, the lifestyle or the culture or, uh, more than. And then gradually, the, this period, more he de through the third period, he developed his own language, and more and more sculpt looks like a sculpture with a big power showing. And then the, I think they against this direction. So the, from 80s become, uh, so the, uh, it's very complicated under the Ito-san office. Of course, we are uh, all interested in Shinohara's way, but at the same time, he really want more the architecture be uh, open <laughs> and then the connected to the society, not stand alone. So that this is, but uh, now we can understand also Shinohara's, uh, not only the forum, but also he more try to touch the maybe city, mm -hmm. but, uh, so that time I remembered when I started my own farm that I was invited to some workshop in Europe and I used my English uh, even worse, much, much worse than now. And then I used to try to connect it to society. Instead, I said open. And no one understand the open. What is open? <laughs> open is typical in 80s in Japan. It's very typical word, open. That means more, Architecture, 
uh, not only the physical, but also physically, but also the more the relate that to connect to the society. And this is Ito-san or Sakamoto-san started to this. But as Shinohara-san uh, seems uh, moved another way. Mm -hmm. So then the, somehow Shinohara school become not so uh, one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what the next generation, yes. especially Tsukamoto-san, mm -hmm. is also try to admire Shinohara-san and Sakamoto-san. Sakamoto-san tried to be different from Shinohara-san, but he also both criticized too. <laughs> so that is great. It's not so easy, but I think also the, because of the three, Ito-san and Hasegawa-san also have very strong relation to the Kikutake. Yeah. And then Sakamoto is only the Shinohara. And Ito never work or directly work under Shinohara. And uh, Hasegawa-san is both. So maybe slightly very different, I think. So many, I think, movement happened from that, I think. But gradually now, uh, before, some period of Shinohara became so quiet in the, in the Japanese uh, publicity, I think. Right. So he, um, in, in Japanese national universities, um, the, uh, at the time especially, uh, there was mandatory retirement at 60. So Shinohara retired from teaching from Tokyo Tech in 1985 and started, that was only then that he start, when he started his own independent practice. Uh, prior to that, he, all of these buildings were really designed, built um, out of uh, the laboratory at Tokyo Tech. Um, but since we're now talking about uh, going into the modern next period, um, and, and you have already brought this up, the, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the international um, uh, situation. Um, by so, then, oh. Oh, uh, <laughs> so by then, for instance, people like Tange or Maki or Izuzaki were already very well-known figures uh, internationally. Uh, and Izazaki in particular uh, were, uh, established very strong connections uh, with people like um, Eisenman and Richard Meyer uh, in New York with the IAUS. Um, and um, he was also, uh, and, and Izazaki continues to do this today, very good at cultivating uh, the next generation. So he was very generous in bringing people like Ando-san or Ito-san to New York and introducing them to the circle. And to some extent, I think um, Shinohara also benefited uh, from this exposure. But started in the 1980s, so Japanese architects like um, Shinohara were being invited to competitions, to symposia, uh, to, symposia to other events um, outside of Japan. Uh, there was, uh, that only started to happen in the 1980s. And of course, there's the yeah, 80s. Um, so Shinohara's first international project, project outside of Japan, it was a competition for the Dome headquarters in Cologne in Germany. Uh, that was in 1981. Uh, and then in 81, he, he was also invited to do solo exhibitions in Europe and, uh, and the United States. Um, so outside of Japan, um, this international situation became much more important. Uh, in, in, in how he dealt with um, uh, his architecture, that, of course, he could no longer deal with tradition uh, as he did in the 1950s or 60s, uh, that the context um, of this nextness in modern next became very, very different. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the, he started from 80s, invited to the uh, outside. But uh, in Japan, more everyone uh, focus. Like next generation is like the three architects are become more popular and then we are very interested in. So, so we, we actually the deal is a, uh, it's not a competition. At that time, it's kind of commission. And so I remember we really uh, 
feel felt uh, expected <laughs> of finally Shinohara will make a big and also the building project in abroad. But <laughs> it's not happened. But uh, so this is more it, 90s, no? maybe 90. Yeah. Um, so th this um, we're now talking about the Euralio. Uh -huh. um, project, which is on display in the gallery. It's primarily a hotel. It went through a series of different designs, different phases. I think it started in 1989, 1990, and then uh, the project was finally terminated in 90, 1993 with the global economic uh, downturn. Maybe I think the uh, late 70s or Maybe the, the, I saw the photo of the Africa. When that was taken, the... The Agadir competition was the, um, uh, 1992. Africa, many African photos. Yeah. That after the, this, I joined his uh, lecture, mm -hmm. and he showed the photos. And then I only remember he used the word cross, cross, crossing, crossing. The, so the, I think the, so I was a student, and then crossing, crossing in the different culture. This is maybe now the, some kind of starting to think about uh, more uh, mix to the many different culture or the event in Japan. That, that's really interesting. Uh, even in Agadir, the idea of crossing was, because you think of when you look at the model, it's so iconic, it's such a solitary um, standalone object. Um, but crossing is an idea that really yeah. was brought to the fore in Tanikawa House uh -huh, yeah. by the sheer um, incline, the slope in the interior space, uh -huh. uh, the, the gentle um, geometry of, of nature clashing with the very rigid 45 degree angle of the roof and the interior um, diagonal braces, the, the, what he called the diagonal columns. Um, the, the intent, as he described it, was really to force you into an unstable condition so you're constantly on the move in the interior space. But it's, it's quite shocking that even in Agadir, yeah, that, that the idea true. of this movement is, is so prominent. But maybe this more become clear, the, the fourth period, the many, I think, the, the randomness of many things is just... Mm. Coming together, I think. Maybe um, if I could make it a little bit more personal in your own experience, uh, in terms of this exposure to the international scene, this international community, you yourself, you established your own independent, independent practice in 1987. But quite early on, you were also invited to, to these international events, international forums, to participate in competitions, workshops. And, and that was really, um, in, in terms of Japan, a, a very almost unique um, situation, no? that, that there is such close uh, interaction between the, the different communities uh, globally. Mm, because uh that is uh, through because I started my own practice eighty seven, so that the eighties is a many exchange things happened, and especially that time is the Japanese economy was really high, so started to invite also the many architects uh, from abroad, and also gradually the architects have, will get the opportunity to be able to go out. And then also media uh, change a lot. So yes, uh, um, but, uh, not, uh, but uh, uh, 83 or something, the, when I was uh, uh, working for Ito Sand Studio, the Isoki like invite Ito and Ando to join the conference. That time, even Ito San <laughs> was so surprised to go to abroad. <laughs> and we all, uh, four or five people, <laughs> very small studio, were very shocked. And then there are not so, there are no projects, but 
Ministra, we must make some project to present at the conference. This is a situation, I think, in Japan at that time. And then 10 years later, the, uh, because Ito-san or many uh, Shinohara san is went to outside and then introduced younger generation. So that mean for me is and also the many yeah fax machine. <laughs> so these are the <laughs> progressed and then yes, to, I I saw the I had the invitation that to publish El Croqui is when. I opened the studio two, three la years later, and I couldn't imagine such a thing happened. <laughs> so the fax machine paper arrived, and then what the meaning? <laughs> because I have only found two projects, <laughs> and then I sent to my friend, foreign friend, what the meaning? <laughs> and then they said, oh, they like the virus. <laughs> ah, this are the, is very daily life. And so the now change very a lot. And, uh, but after the, yeah, next week, them will come. Them, next, next week, I, I heard. Yeah, big influence the after, until maybe the end of the 80s, the, Information from abroad, especially uh, lens information arrive. But I think not only Japan, all the world, I think. But, and then the young architects are very shocked. But also, the, when I was a student, uh, yeah, I remember the students, the, it's the uh, uh, house I learned, the house should be like this and like this. But at the same time, A plus U published the. Uh, a school. That also I couldn't understand anything, but just uh, graphically, the, I felt uh, so different and uh, encourage we or the architecture world is not how it should be like this. But so that it's also the Shinohara's different Shinohara's way, but uh, it's also very big. Uh, uh, present or accident in Japanese architecture the world, I think. Um, thank you. So perhaps this would be a good opportunity to turn, um, to, to open up to the floor to, uh, uh, um, for questions from the audience. Uh, I'm sure there are many, many, uh, either um, about Shinohara or perhaps other questions you may have um, for, for Seijima-san. Hello. Th thank you for the lecture and the conversation and the exhibition. Um, I think it's very interesting that uh, Mr. Song Kwan study both uh, Tangi Kenzo and uh, Kazo Shino Nara. And my question is for uh, Shijima Sang. Uh, Tangi represent, uh, from my perspective, represent Tokyo University, which focus more on property buildings, and Shinonara uh, represents uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology, which focus more on housing. And my question is, uh, which size influence you more, and uh, or which size uh, you are more, fit, you more, uh, it, is your favorite or you preferred more? Thank you. Yeah, because the the 70s, the public building uh, uh, designed so that uh, Todai has a big power, I think. <laughs> and then the, uh, the Tange, of course, stand uh, most uh, uh, with power, so a lot of maybe public project, important uh, the national project went to uh, Tangesan. Now that we have, because we must uh, always have a, uh, at least competition, so, but at that time there are not, so I think no competition, I think. They just uh, uh, went to some architects and, and then 
to do this situation, the, the Shinohara san、um, belonged to TI Tech, and then his professor is Ikebe san. And then Ikebe san also designed only almost、uh, houses. And then also that the 50s, also the, for Japan, is to think about the, how to make amount of house and how to develop. Is a good lifestyle after the war. It's a very important issue, I think. So, the one is how to make a public building for Japan, but at the same time, also how to make a good condition、um, and also minimum house because we didn't have a material. So, that it's really important to use thing,、uh, thing and small. Member of steel or the, even wood, I think. So, that means also that this, some aesthetic related to also traditional aesthetic. So, the thinness or the smallness is,、uh, doesn't mean so poorness. Of course, poor, poor <laughs> makes this requirement, but at the same time, this relates to some aesthetic. <laughs> and then this develops. So, two. And for students, It's more realistic, <laughs> the Shinohara's way, because、uh, the big, big public building is very far. <laughs> of course, the Tokyo Olympic、uh, the gymnasium,、uh, everyone impressed.、Um, but uh, afterwards, uh, if to, I don't know who, Chris, <laughs> but、uh, more I'm fascinated. The,、uh, somehow, the The Shinohara's way, I was a student also. But、uh, gradually, also, of course, Tange's <laughs> importance also,、uh, I gradually realized. But Tange's son also stands somehow the、uh, Japanese tradition. It's so that, <laughs> that you show the two houses as very similar. <laughs> so it's, it's really quite remarkable. Again, going back to, to this idea of.、Um, Um, of a timeline, of a historical narrative.、Uh, so, Sejima san started、um, studying architecture in 1971 72.、Um, and she talks about how、um, immediately drawn she was to, to Shinohara's work, which makes a lot of sense for those of us who are completely immersed in the world of Shinohara. But when we look at the 1970s, look at 1971 72. It, I'm a little bit surprised <laughs> because the, the crowning achievement of Japanese architecture in 19, at that time was Tange's、uh, Osaka Expo, that enormous festival、uh, plaza with, with the space frame designed by、um, uh, Isozaki and, and Kawaguchi Sensei.、Um, and, but already in 1971, and, and、um, for You and people in your circle to be so quickly gravitating towards the opposite side to, to, to this critical minority、um, point of view for me is really quite startling.、Uh, startling. <laughs>